Well, hello, YouTubers. So uh, let's let's continue with the uh, with the series of videos here. Uh, this is going to be video number five of the series. This is code first with no database. So we're going to create the database based on our code. Um, Entity Framework is going to take is going to take care of a lot of that, a lot of stuff for us. So initially, I just want to show you the uh, database structure right now. We're going to refresh, and you can see that I don't have a um, the database that we're going to create. I have the accounting system, and I have the books. Um, I don't know if I talked about the books. Maybe, maybe I used in, a, in another tutorial. I'm not 100% sure. So, anyways, let's start a new project here. It's going to be a console application. This is code first, and click OK. Uh, once again, we have to save it. And now I can go under uh, References, Manage NuGet Packages, and then install Entity Framework 5.0. If you don't see it in the list, you can always search online for it. Um, Entity Framework is uh, used very often, so it's right at the uh, most downloads. Uh, and click Install. Okay, so now we have Entity Framework 5.0 in our project. We can go ahead and get started. Um, usually, you would break this into separate classes, but just for the uh, for the sake of uh, of simplicity, I'm just going to do everything in the same in the same um, uh, class file. So our first class is going to be a student class. Uh, make sure that this is public, and let's just set a couple of uh, scalar properties in here. I'm going to type in the key the keyword PROP and I'm gonna tab it a couple times and that that snippet of code makes it easier so this one is going to be an int I'm gonna tab again and then student ID and then PROP again tab tab string let's type string correctly string uh, name okay and then we have a navigation property in here, which is also, uh, let's see, of type subject. Uh, I don't have that type available yet, right? So uh, let me do this. Well, actually, let's use the key. Let's do list of uh, subject. We're going to create that class in just a little bit. Subjects. Subjects and this is going to be a virtual property. The virtual property will allow uh, Entity Framework to f to to fill up that uh, that property with data and also to uh, query. Let's get rid of this. No need for that. And I think we're done with that one. Let's create another class, and this is going to be the subject class again. Make sure it's public. And then the first scalar property, it's going to be an int, and it's going to be subject ID, subject a string, um, subject name. And then in here, we have another property. We have a public virtual student. student class get and set so at that point um, entity framework can subjects entity framework can actually create the association between student and subject so for each student can be can have many subjects okay so that's why we have a list of subjects and now that so this is these are our uh, domain specific objects and now we have to create the uh, DB context, okay? Which is um, the class that is going to talk to the database and and send changes to the database. It's gonna it's gonna ask to insert, delete, read, update, and so on. I'm gonna call it student context, and I'm going to inherit from um, DB context, and that lives inside the system that data that entity that DB context. If you if you didn't get this right out of, right out of the bat, make sure that under references you have your uh, entity framework 5.0 in there. In here, 
create a couple properties in here of db set db set allows you to um allows the uh, contacts to access those entities in the server and one is going to be the student so students and then the other one db set it's going to be of type uh, subject and it's going to be subjects very good I have resharper enable here so it just complain a little bit about uh, the naming but uh, it, it likes camel casing which is not a problem okay so let's go ahead and then write some code now so we can persist to the database make sure it, and, and keep in mind that initially I showed you that SQL Server doesn't have the uh, database created yet so using var db equals new um, new um, student context and in here we're going to create a new student new student and this student has the name of I'm just gonna give it my own name Fabio Scopel and then we have a couple subjects so this is the uh, so this is gonna be the math subject equals new subject and the name of the subject is mathematics and let's create another subject mm, science uh, subject equals new subject and the name is um, data structures very good so now we have one student we have two subjects what we need to do is put this two subjects inside the student so under student dot subjects let's add to the list of subjects the math subject and then let's do the same thing again students dot subject dot add science subject and then at this point we're ready to uh, add this entities back into the, the uh, student context so db dot student dot add and then we want to add the student back to it and then we want to make that change dot save changes so um, now now here's a, here's a problem that we're going to run into by default entity framework will try to uh, will try to initialize a connection string directly to the local DB or the uh, local SQL Express I have either running I only I have a instance of uh, SQL Server 2012 running at that point so I need to specify the connection string so for that I'm gonna go inside the uh, um, app config here and under parameters I think this is the location default connection factory local DB entity framework so let's go ahead and try to do that right over here see server is gonna be equal to dev fscopel2 the database is going to be a brand new database so it's gonna be the uh, students database my user is SA and the password is CBS Inc. 123. Let's try that. Not 100% sure that will work, but uh, let's put a breakpoint in here. See how that goes. Make this smaller so we can see. and he didn't like that right away so let's see what did we do wrong instead of this parameters in here let's create oh 
I think I I add something in there, didn't I? Maybe that's okay. I think I uh, made a mistake up there earlier and I didn't notice. Let's try again. Yep, that was okay. So now we have a student, we have two subjects, and now we're going to try to add the subject to the student and we have an exception. Object reference not set to the instance of an object. Ah, okay. So, you know, this is what I like about uh, doing these things live, live like this, is because you're always running to these little problems. And then whenever you watch videos on the web, they always work perfectly. Like, there's, there's never a problem anywhere. So what's the issue here? The issue here is that we have this property, which is a list, but we're not initializing it anywhere. So the student actually gets a null list. So what we need to do here is initialize that list. So public student, okay, no parameters needed. We're just going to say that this dot subjects, which is our list of subjects, equals new list of subjects. Okay, so now we have an actual list when we start when we start the application. Let's take a look at the student now. Oh, see, it goes down here. That's the uh, empty constructor. And now when we look at student, we can see that we have the subjects now is initialized, has zero subjects in it, but at least is initialized. So now we can add both of the subjects to the same student. Let's add to the database context. And it's taking a while here. It's thinking. Maybe it will work. Maybe it won't. Let's see what's happening here. It's trying to run the SQL to get the database created. This database, this is student's database. And it threw an exception. Let's see. So there's something wrong with our connection string. Let's see what's wrong. The specified local DB instance does not exist. Well, I know it doesn't exist, and uh, it's you're supposed to create it. Are we missing? What are we missing? Value entity framework students DB server database. Let's do this differently. I usually do this inside connection string. And then we're going to add a new connection. The connection string is going to be equal to this. That's our connection string the name of it, let's see, you try to do things in a different way, sometimes it doesn't work. The name of it will be the same name as the entity, so this this case student entity, and then we need the provider name as well, don't we? Provider name is, well, it's equal to system.data.sql client, that's our provider. Let's give that another shot. Let's see if that if that does the job. And F11 all the way. It's trying to add and look at that. And now it looks like it worked. Okay, let's pull out our SQL Server here real quick. You can see that it went all the way through. I'm gonna right-click database and refresh. And do we see a student? Oh, there it is. A students database at the very bottom. Let's look at the tables. Uh, keys, we have a key in there, so select top 1000. We can see that under the uh, students, um, uh, students table, I have one record, and inside my subjects, I have two different keys, one primary and one foreign. And there it is, we have both of our records in there. So now we can see that the student Fabio, it's associated to two subjects, one mathematics, one data structure. Um, 
I'm going to do one more video on code first on how to update. So let's say that something changes in the database or something changes in code and how do you how do you make those changes in the database? So uh, stay tuned, uh, like, subscribe and watch part number two right now. Okay, thanks for watching.